क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम इकीडा Hey friends in the previous lecture we have discussed about the acidic nature of SO2 and now in this topic we are going to talk about the chemical properties of SO2 so what are those let me talk about that in this topic So friends in this topic we are going to talk about the chemical properties of SO2 so what are those let me talk about that one by one so starting about the first one that is let us talk about the action of NaOH on SO2. So this is the reaction that is what we have discussed in our earlier lecture also. But now let us recall it back. That is suppose if two moles of NaOH is reacted with SO2 that is sulfur dioxide, then there will be a production of that is Na2SO3 that is sodium sulfide. And obviously the H2 it will be as a byproduct. So whenever this Na2SO3 along with that of this H2 is further reacted with SO2, we could form that is NaHSO3 which is known as sodium bisulfide. That is NaHSO3 or we could also call it as sodium hydrogen sulfide. So this was the reaction of that is SO2 on NOH and now let me talk about the next one. So the next chemical reaction is action of Cl2 on SO2. So in this case we see sulfur dioxide that is SO2 whenever it has been treated with Cl2 it forms that is SO2Cl2 which is known as sulfuryl chloride. So this is the second reaction that is what we have discussed about and now let me talk about the next reaction. So now let us understand the action of O2 on SO2. So that is SO2 that is sulfur dioxide whenever it has been treated with O2 that also in presence of the catalyst that is V2O5 which is known as vanadium pentoxide so it forms as two moles of SO3. This reaction is a very much important reaction in the contact process where we can prepare H2SO4 but talking about the contact process this is what we are going to talk about in the future but now let me discuss about the another reaction. The next is action of SO2 on I2. So in this case basically whenever the I2 that is iodine is reacted with SO2 in presence of water we can find the product that is 2 moles of HI along with that of H2SO4. So in this case basically the iodine which has an oxidation state of 0 is basically converting into an oxidation state of minus 1. So that means here basically SO2 is acting like a reducing agent and that's the reason that uh, here this reaction is a proof where how we can see that is SO2 is acting like a reducing agent. So now let me talk about the next reaction. So the next is action of SO2 on K2Cr2O7 that is known as potassium dichromate. So in this case whenever the potassium dichromate is treated with sulfuric acid that is H2SO4 obviously it is an acidic condition that we are maintaining along with that of 3 moles of SO2 then we can find that is there will be formation of K2SO4 along with that of that is Cr2SO4 thrice. This is known as potassium sulfate while this is known as chromium sulfate along with that of H2. So here also basically this K2Cr2O7 which is obviously we understand that is it is an that is oxidizing agent suppose if it is treated with SO2 so we can form K2SO4 so that means that even this shows that the property where how SO2 can be reacted with K2Cr2O7 in acidic condition and now let me talk about the next reaction. The next is action of SO2 on acidic KMnO4 solution. So this is an acidic KMnO4 solution suppose in this case what happens is whenever two moles of KMnO4 obviously it is reacted with that is 5 moles of SO2 and we understand that is SO2 is nothing but it is acidic in nature and that also in presence of that is 2 moles of H2. So therefore the product that is what we could get is K2SO4 which is known as potassium sulfate along with that of that is MnSO4 that is known as manganese sulfate along with that of 2 moles of H2SO4. So this is one of the reaction that is what I have discussed about for the previous one. I have discussed about that is the oxidizing agent that is potassium dichromate and now in this case it is potassium permanganate. So now let us discuss about the next one. The next is action of SO2 on FeCl3. So in this case we see whenever 2 moles of FeCl3 is reacted with SO2 and that also in presence of that is 2 moles of H2 we could get a product that is 2 moles of FeCl2 along with that of H2SO4 and HCl. So if you observe then this Fe will have an oxidation state of 3 plus 3 but in this case of this is converting into FeCl2 which has an oxidation state of 2 if I am talking about that is Fe. So that's the reason this SO2 helps to convert this iron which is having an oxidation state of 3 to convert into an oxidation state for Fe as 2. So thereby this SO2 is acting like a reducing agent. So now let me talk about the next reaction. 
so this is the next reaction that is the action of so2 on h2s that is whenever the sulfur dioxide is treated with hydrogen sulfide and in this case if you talk about then this sulfur will have an oxidation state of minus 2 so this oxidation state of minus 2 is converting into a product that is h2 and 3 moles of s and that is the one which will have that it's an oxidation state of 0 so thereby here we can see that this minus 2 that is the sulfur it is basically oxidized into a sulfur which has an oxidation state of zero so thereby this is the one which is acting like an oxidizing agent so thereby we can also say that is so2 can act like a reducing agent also and can act like an oxidizing agent also depending on the reactant and depending on the condition so therefore this were all the chemical reactions of so2 that is what i want to discuss about so thank you friends for watching this video i hope you have understood this video very clearly and i hope i I'll see you next time. Till then, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much.